Meanwhile, back in October. I can't get you out of my mind. It's like I feel it for the first time. Been thinking about you all night. I've been searching for this all my life. Good morning, bro. <laughs> We're here, y'all. What's on our agenda today, baby? Walk, 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 walk. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> we have a free walking tour today. So we are going to go and find that location. On the way to that location, perhaps we'll stumble into something for a little breakfast situation because it's already 10 o'clock and our walking tour starts at 11. We were supposed to go to the Tre Trevi Fountain this morning, early in the morning before people got up and stuff. Mm -mm, not this guy. Not this guy. Um, we was also supposed to do the Coliseum today. It got canceled. They said political event. What are you looking at? <laughs> you don't even care about y'all. They said a political event. So I don't. we don't know what that means, um, but we're going to figure something out. Let's go to the free walking tour. Bye. Oh, baby, we got to put it in the thing where we going for the walking tour. They have um, cooking classes here. Oh, that's pretty dope, right? All right, y'all, we stopped at a little a little spot, a little cafe, and we got us um, a cappuccino to go, and we got him a cappuccino to go and two muffins. Um, the thing is, when you go to a cafe, as long as you stand, you don't get charged like a fee. If you're standing and drinking your cafe, if you sit at a table, you get charged like a table fee. Um, I don't know what the proper name for it is, but yeah, it's not much. But you know, oh, you just know if you sit, yeah, if you sit, you get charged like a table, a sitting fee. But if you stand at the bar and drink, you don't get charged. So, yeah. All right, I think we're almost there. I think I see Jay's grandfather's obelisk, also known as a te teka. Is it a teka? I think it's called a Tekka. So, we'll be there soon. Guys, we think that that's Jay's grandfather, great, 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 grandfather's obelisk. Ramses the second, straight from Egypt, transported here to Rome on a ship. Like, the fact that they went all the way to Africa, not just to get people, but to get the things to, <laughs> to get the things to. We think that where we're meeting is somewhere in this square. Set north. And we haven't been in this square. Like we have not even been over here. Like what is all this beauty? Like, stop playing with Jay and his emotions. Uh, his emotion but you notice that other obelisk at the Vatican that they took from Egypt, but they inscribed it with the Pope's shit. Like, it don't say, like, this is the obelisk of this pharaoh or that pharaoh. Yeah. Oh, it, it says, it yeah, no, no, what I'm saying is they overlaid the inscription and dedicated it to a Pope. Oh. So we might have to look it up on the internet to see what this one is because once again, they don't really be putting the history of the obelisk for real. And we don't read hieroglyphics, so we can't even tell you what any of that says. <laughs> we think this is the one. I got him saying this is grandfather. <laughs> so when Jay did his 23andMe DNA, for if you're related to anybody like famous and stuff like that or historical, it'll come back in your results. So for mine, nothing came back in my results. But for Jay, it said descendant of Ramses the third or the second. I can't remember which one. But either way. If it's Ramses, we're going to claim it as Jay's ancestry. Look at it. Wouldn't it been nice if we could read hieroglyphics? But we know one thing. This stuff down here is Roman. This side. Recorded. Let me see if I can read my, my family's handwriting. Okay, but baby, I was going to say this. You notice this writing on the bottom? 
is in um, Latin, so you know that they re-inscribed that with some Latin Roman shit. And up top is the hieroglyphics, so go ahead. Okay. <laughs> These Emma uh, us are gonna steal me away and bring it to Rome. <laughs> And these were holy, ritualistic monuments. And the fact that the Catholic Church, the home of Catholicism, are taking these so-called pagan objects and bringing it here and dedicating them to popes, that's kind of interesting. Let's, let's see if Google can translate this. All right. Okay, I got the camera on. <laughs> Why is Jay doing Google Translate? <laughs> on the... <laughs> Under hieroglyphics. Let's see if Google woke. Oh. Translate. Nope. <laughs> uh uh. Google's like, if you don't take a picture of text and stop showing me these um pictures. Yes, this is the Flaminio obelisk of King Ra of Ramses the second. This is Jay's people. Yeah. So this is the arches. And the instructions say the statue on the left with the man holding the book right there is where we're going to meet. And that is the man. And that's because of the road behind us. You see where you're standing because of the road. Well, now we're very simple looking. So the inside of this arch de popolo. Popolo means of the people. Bernini designed this side. The other side was designed by Michelangelo, who started working on it from his age of 80 to 88 years old. Retirement who? Retirement what? Like, y'all, imagine that. Being able to work on your passion forever, practically. Like, wow. And this free tour, it's a small, intimate group. Look, there's only six of us. But our tour guide is so good. He only told us about the arches so far. And I'm so impressed. I love it. So this is the god Neptune also, Poseidon, if you're going to go by the Greek gods, on this side. So on that side is the goddess Athena, also known as the goddess Rome. And then there is Romulus and Remus on her sides. And remember, one of them killed the brother and then became the first king of Rome. So this was originally placed inside the Circus Maximus. And it was the first one that they took from Egypt. And it's also the biggest. And this is Ramses II. Y'all can't tell me these guys aren't the bomb. So these are made out of pink granite. Now listen, it's been here in Rome for like 2,000 years. And before that, in Egypt. Egypt. It was in Egypt for 2,000 years. It's over 4,000 years old. So these twin churches were started by Rinaldi, but of course they were finished by Bernini, the second hardest working man in Italy outside of Michelangelo. And in this square alone, there's three churches of over 600 churches that are just in central Rome alone. 600. So this tecta was taken from the Temple of the Sun in Luxor, Egypt. Imagine if they were all returned to Egypt in their original locations. Imagine how that would look. Like, wow. So this is the tomb of the first Roman Emperor, Augustus. He designed it himself. So four domes are missing from the top. On this wall is everything Augustus wrote about himself, all the great things he did. And, you know, they was like, it's probably exaggerated, but he's like, yo, I did this, I did that. Yeah, I'm the greatest thing ever, and I really built up the city. What is up? Toot your own horn, people. Toot it. Toot toot. So this building was the home of the Borghese family. And you know that because their sign is dragon and eagle. So on this lamp post is a dragon. And on this one is an eagle. And then also along the top is dragons and eagles. But their whole family, like hundreds, because it's second cousins, first cousins, extended family, they all lived here.
Yeah, pretty much. They had a whole apartment building <laughs> just for the homies. Best tour guide ever, Lucia. Lucia. So all of these belong to them, and this is where the servants lived in like the stable houses and stuff like that. So the thing about Rome is a lot of it was built over the ancient ruins. And this right here is an example of that because this is the column from the original building. And then this building was built on top of that because they found that the old foundations were actually really strong and they're still usable to this day. So this is the street of the female roof of the female wolf because supposedly when Romulus and Remus was founded by the she-wolf, the she-wolf bought them here. Hence, Via della Lupa. So they say that the babies weren't truly found by a wolf, like, duh, who believed that, right? But really was found by a prostitute. But to make the story more palatable, they changed the prostitute into a female wolf rather than a woman with vaginal power. Hmm. Yeah, I'm still blown over that, guys. Rather than say that the baby twins were raised by a woman who happened to get money off of sex in her vagina, let's just change it to a wolf. Because no way will we empower women like that. So yeah, they were raised by an animal rather than a human being. So there's like 150 flavors of gelato at this place. Guys. Yeah, you just need the restroom go inside here. It's a door at the back. So, oh, these are some good, good pastries here. There goes the gelato. You got the moose section. Mango. Uh, sweet, so kind of a no Let's see which ones I'm gonna get. These flavors are so interesting. Honestly, I wanna taste the avocado. I wanna taste the avocado ice cream. Like what in all of the worlds? I love how they have like whatever the fruit is to represent it. It could kind of help you identify things faster or whatever. So that's how I seen that. I seen a big old avocado and I'm like, what in the world? Oh my goodness, look, they have macaroons. Okay, we got our gelato for the second time. They're going to pick up a nugget. We have walnut, cheesecake, and pistachio. Yay! I'm only going to eat a little bit because it makes me congested. Okay, anyways, these people are in line to get a sandwich from this shop right here. They're originally from Florence, but they opened up a shop here, and it's like a really good sandwich. They say the line moves fast. But yeah, so that's the thing. If you are looking for a good place to get a good sandwich, there you have it. Wow. So guys, we were here yesterday. So, <laughs> yeah, we came yesterday and we went inside. It was nice. 
and there wasn't a line when we went and then when we came out it was like this long line so this was built by a Gripa who was a general so he would go to war then he would come back and build stuff so this was one of the things that he built pantheon pan means all theon means gods so it's a temple to all gods tight those little holes up top are not like bullet holes or you know the temple falling apart they were all actually bronze decorations figurines all kind of bronze things up there Bernini was allowed to take all that bronze off of this and melt it down and repurpose it where do you see that bronze now in the center of St. Peter's Basilica obelisk is original from Egypt as well as each of these columns. One piece of stone, all transport here from Egypt in AD somebody, in somebody's AD. I mean, in BC, no, or is it AD? 27 AD, I believe, 27 AD. So this is Piazza Navona, where we're staying in. But this originally was a stadium. That's why this is like the shape of an oval because they will have races and games here much like the Olympics games. This house here was one of the founding families here but they actually sold it off to Brazil so now it's the Brazilian embassy. But in this heyday where these buildings are were actually seats for a stadium and it was set over 30,000 spectators. So Boromini and Benini were arch nemesis. They were rivals. So Boromini actually designed this church. Before the fountain in front of the church, the Pope at the time actually ran a contest. Boromini built presented the Pope with sketches. It was kind of small, his idea, so the Pope was not impressed. And then here comes Bernini, his his enemy, who bought a one meter high model replica of his fountain, and he won. So Bernini did this fountain, and this is the only obelisk that was not brought in from Egypt. So when you look at this one right here, it's represented by four men that represent the four great rivers of the world. The Nile, the Plata, <laughs> something like silver plate. I don't know. It's in South America, in Argentina. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the Ganga, <laughs> which is in Asia. And there was another one. What one was in Europe? Yeah. There's an, a European one, too. So each of these represent those rivers. And this represented where we ate last night. <laughs> right? Mine wasn't. I mean, it was fine. It wasn't, it was cooked well. There just wasn't a whole lot of seasoning going on. And nobody came by with like the cheese to grate over our plate or fresh cracked pepper or anything to maybe help enhance the flavors. So my food was just very bland, but it was cooked well. It was cooked well, right? It was cooked well and fresh. And you know it was because it took a minute to come out. So, and I was hungry, so I ate, that, I ate it like, it hit the spot, but I could use some seasoning, boo. So scenes from the book club with Diane Keaton were filmed right here. Like they put tables and stuff out right here. And so this is where we are, Via Dai de Coronari. And then Vicolo di Mati Vicio, if you want to find it. So that's what those two signs say. <laughs> So this bridge goes over the Tiber River and the statues on the left and right, 12 in total, were designed by Bernini. So on this one we have St. Paul on this side and then St. Peter on that side. Their names are not written on the statue but you know who they are by what they're holding in their hand. This one is the sword, and this one he holds the keys in the Book of Life. The retelling of 
the passion of Christ, everything, the events that led up to the crucifixion, crucifixion of Christ are told through the angels on each side, leading to San Angelo Castle. Both St. Paul and St. Peter were, were both killed here in Rome. They say that Paul was beheaded in Rome and Peter was crucified upside down in the location that is now St. Peter's Basilica. See the last two angels hold the daggers that pierce Christ's skin. St. Angelo's castle was actually supposed to be the mausoleum, the tomb of Hadrian. He designed this. The Tiber River. I highly recommend this tour, y'all. I highly recommend. Again, yesterday we were walking around and we seen a lots of these sites, but we didn't know the story. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know the story of what we were looking at, you know? I love knowing the story behind the art, the story behind the buildings, the story, the history of a thing. And this guy, he is so freaking good at explaining what it is. And he knows a lot, even when I was asking him questions about Egypt and so on and so forth, and the things that were taken from there, he even had answers for that. Where a lot of other tour guides are just like, I don't know. And the name of this company, in case you're wondering, is Rome's Ultimate Tours. Rome's Ultimate Tours is the name of the company. Rome's Ultimate Walks. Rome's Ultimate Walks. And they have several tours that you can choose from. From That's this side, you can see the Dome of St. Peter's Basilica. All right, guys. Hold on, let us stop for a second. Baby, Jay likes y'all. Don't worry about him. <laughs> we finished our free walk and tour. What did you think? It was great. He was very knowledgeable, uh, surprising us with his history. Yeah. So I was so, super impressed. So we paid, we actually paid $25 a person for our tip. That was just a tip because they work on tips only. So we gave him a 50 euro tip and, um, it was worth it. Normally, I give, I do about 10 to 15 euro, depending. Again, if it's a good tour. Um, I think we covered a lot of ground in that tour. Yes, we did. We covered a lot of ground. So that was pretty dope. So dope that I'm considering doing their 7 p.m. tour tonight. Um, that's 40 euro a person, so you got to actually book it ahead of time. I'm considering it. I'm considering it. We got to pull out some money. No, we pay for it online. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we can pay for it online because we're out of money and Jay... Jay don't know what he did with his ATM card. <laughs> I left my ring back at the room. And what, what was and the third thing? In my bracelet. And then I also got something talking about some of our Google ads since account was canceled. I don't know what any of that means. So that got Jay in his feelings. He feeling down. But guess what, booze? I'm here in Rome. I can't do nothing about any of that stuff. Right here, right now. I'm not letting any of that cloud my day. This perfect day. With not a cloud in sight in Rome. Okay? We're going to get this Rome experience on. Jay is going to be happy. It's only stuff. It's only things. It don't matter. It I can't get you out of my mind It's like I feel it for the first time Been thinking about you all night I've been searching for this all my life You're just my type